Student of the Game podcast. All right, so it looks like the Milwaukee Bucks, they have evened the series, people. The series is even at two games to two. Um, the Milwaukee Bucks won tonight. We'll score 109 to 103. This was a good game. This was a very up and down game. It felt like a, you know, this was a game that you could tell both teams, they understood the magnitude of this game. Like if you're the Phoenix Suns, check this out. You just got blown out by the Milwaukee Bucks on Sunday, three days ago. OK, so you are ready to get back at them. And a lot of times when you're in blowouts, especially when, you know, the game is just about over midway in the fourth quarter, you're already thinking about, man, I'm telling you, wait till I get a chance to get this team back It's going to be on. I mean, I guess that's part of the reason why Coach Monty Williams had benched Devin Booker um, for the entire fourth quarter because he saved him for game four. And guess what? I think it paid off because. Devin Booker was locked and loaded. I think he was like 16 for 28 today, 40 points, 42 points. I mean, the dude was just phenomenal in the mid-range game today, right? And But the drawback of it, in that same game, in game three, he continued to play Chris Paul those minutes. And I felt like, well, because CP3 is a much older player, you probably should have been resting him as well because Chris Paul had one of his worst games as a Phoenix Sun. 10 points, he had seven assists, four boards, but only 10 points. I don't even remember him scoring to 10 points. A couple of those points were garbage points. But anyways, the Milwaukee Bucks, man, Chris Middleton stepped his game up big time, big time. I remember um, at the end of game three at the press conference, you had several of the Phoenix Suns players talking about, well, we need to put up some kind of wall to stop Giannis. So you knew going into this game, they're going to try their best to stop Giannis because if, you're, if you include the regular season where Giannis averaged 40 points a game, Against the Phoenix Suns, that's two games. Then the three games that they already played, I mean, he's almost averaging 40 points a game against this team. So they feel, you know what, we can't let Giannis beat us completely. Now, they didn't shut him down, but Giannis was still effective. But guess what? Chris Middleton lit it up today. 40 points. Now, I know Kendrick Perkins is going to still call Chris Middleton Batman, but let me tell you something. He is still not Batman. You know why? Because this is a situation where because all the villains were gearing up on Batman, which is Giannis. Guess what? That allowed Robin to eat, which is Middleton. OK, that allowed him to eat. OK, and the thing about it is, hey, had Middleton played half this decent in games one and two, we might be looking at the Milwaukee Bucks up three games to one. All right. Maybe I'm just saying people, but phenomenal game by Chris Middleton. Now, the key is, is for him to do this, have these type of games on the road. I'm not saying he has to be Batman. I think he could be a Batman. But if he's if Middleton is Batman, well, guess what? Giannis is Superman. All right. No matter what Kendrick Perkins say to you. And I love Big Perk. I love his takes and all that stuff. But listen, he's not right all the time. And I'm not right all the time. But just but see, here's the thing. The cool thing about me being not being right all the time. That means I'm right sometimes. And this is sometimes when I'm right. All right. But anyways, man, it was a good game. Good game. But um, the Bucks to me, the Bucks. Now, here's the thing, though. I felt like the Bucks. Let me see. Yeah. They shot about like six for like seven for 30 from downtown. I figure if the Bucks. If they didn't shoot as many threes as they shot, I feel like they could have won this game maybe by 15 points, maybe even 20 points. OK, because once again, from mid range to the paint, they still was able to get good effective shots. Now, it's not the fact that I don't want them to take any threes at all. I just don't think they need to take really any threes because they have a clear size advantage over the Phoenix Suns. But if you're going to shoot some three pointers. Here's the thing. All right. Recognize who you are. You are not the Splash Brothers. You're not Reggie Miller. You're not Dana Barrows. You're not Steve Kerr. You're not Mark Price. You're not Vernon Maxwell. You're not, um, who's another one? Michael Adams. Okay. I'm naming some old school people. You're not Dame Lillard. Okay. You're not Sam Cassell. You're not Paul Pierce. You're not Ray Allen. Did I say Reggie Miller? Okay. You're not those guys. You're not that guy. OK, so y'all should Middleton and Middleton, Cunningham and Holiday. You should not be taking any any transition threes. Your job is to get down court. OK, milk some of that clock, move the ball around, get the ball into Giannis. If you can't get it into Giannis, you come in and take a better shot. OK, 
every time, I'm telling you, 90% of the time, matter of fact, 95.5% of the time, whenever the Bucks come down and shoot a transition three and they miss it, the Suns come back and score. Okay, you're giving away points. Don't do that. You do not need to do that. Y'all over the Bucks, you're a strong defensive team. So check this out. Don't what's the word I'm looking for? What I'm looking for? Um don't don't erase your the hard work that you put in on the defensive side of the ball, okay? Because you know, don't you know you have a let's say the Bucks get a good defense. I'm trying to get my thoughts together here. Excuse me. Let's say if okay they get down, they get a big stop on the Phoenix Suns. And anytime you stop the Suns from scoring on a possession, that is a big plus. All right, that means you played some great defense. All right, but you come back down, 15 seconds on the shot clock, you have to take a transition three, or 20 seconds on the shot clock, you got to take a transition three. Transition three. No, you don't need to do that. Okay, but um, this game here, man, now. I thought a big problem with the Suns. Now, here's the thing. If Chris Paul is not going to get his scoring going, I, I don't see why DeAndre Ayton only took nine shots. He had 17 boards. Only took nine shots. That's the thing. Whenever you have guards who love to score and love to dribble, 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 and you have a good big man like DeAndre Ayton, guess what? It's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work, okay? You got to give and see DeAndre Ayton, I thought he did overall played some solid defense against Giannis at times. But you have to reward your big man. Like, DeAndre Ayton, he has the hardest position to guard out there. He has the most difficult task out of anybody else on the Phoenix Suns team on the defensive side of the ball. So, you know how you keep him involved? You keep him engaged in the game? You give him, get him shots on the other end of the floor, if you're Chris, especially if you're Chris Paul, Devin Booker, hey, his job is to get out there and score. And let me tell you something. That dude did his thing. He was scoring the ball. Okay. But Chris Paul, that's your fault if DeAndre Ayton is only getting nine shots. This is the second time in this series he only got nine shots. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. You got to feed him. And it has to be more than just those lobs and stuff. Because here's the thing. Okay. DeAndre Ayton, he's not DeAndre Jordan. He's not Clint Capella. He's not Tyson Chandler. Now, I'm not saying he can't catch the alley-oops. Of course he can catch the alley-oops, but his offensive game is far beyond that. Okay? Respect that. Feed the man the ball. There's no shame in that. All right? No shame in that. It's easier. It makes your job easier as a point guard. For real. But um, the series tied at 2-2. Tied at 2-2. Head back to Phoenix um, on Wednesday. Let me tell you something. They have a lot of days off in between these games. They have three days off. I remember back in my day watching the NBA Finals, you know what I'm saying, and the teams, they'll have one day in between off, okay? You know, and that's, what, that's what I'm saying. It's like these finals, shoot, by the time the finals are over, it's almost time for preseason to start. Well, you got the USA team. They, start, they have their actual, what's the word I'm looking for, non-exhibition game the day after the finals, I believe, or the day before, one of them. But, um... I remember, and sometime during the second round, you have back-to-back games. Players, they're getting too much rest. And then when they get out there, a lot of players, you see Chris Paul, he looked gassed out there. Chris Paul looked like the 2019 Chris Paul for the Rockets. But um, anyways, I thought it was a good game. Sears tied up 2-2. Hey, my prediction still stands. It still stands solid. Bucks and six. Yes, that means they have to win four in a row. Well, two in a row now. Bucks and six, people. They just got to get one in Phoenix, then get one back at home in Milwaukee. All right. Tell you what, share your thoughts. Tell me what you thought about game. I was going to say game five, game four. And who do you think is going to win game five? Um, did game four go the way you predicted or the way you would like it to go? I tell you what, if you're a Milwaukee Bucks fan, share your thoughts. If you're a Suns fan, share your thoughts. If you're not a fan of either team and you just enjoying watching NBA Finals basketball, share your thoughts in the comment below and hit the like and subscribe button if you're listening to the podcast on YouTube. Okay. But um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Student of the game. Peace.